Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, December 11th, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Last week I talked about the privilege escalation vulnerability in the Kubernetes API server. And if you remember, as the vulnerability was announced and the patch was released, there was already a proof of concept exploit that was made public for an authenticated version of this vulnerability. Well, it turns out we now also have an unauthenticated version of the exploit. So this exploit can be executed with an anonymous connection to the exposed API. So as long as any of your APIs are exposed, uh, this unauthenticated proof of concept exploit will work and it can gain cluster admin rights. So if you haven't done so yet, definitely make sure that you are patching this vulnerability and also review who has access to these APIs and how they can be accessed. Now, if you have been coding web applications and have done so, for example, in part in JavaScript on the client and maybe even JavaScript or other high level languages on the server, then people probably told you that things like format string vulnerabilities and buffer overflows aren't really all that much for you to worry about because after all, these languages manage memory for you. And unless these languages have a flaw, which of course sometimes happens, yes, you're safe from buffer overflows. Well, uh, this is actually changing. And the reason for that is a web assembly. John Bergbaum from Forcepoint came up with a real nice article illustrating how some of these old vulnerabilities can affect WebAssembly by coding or allowing the developer here again to code in C and other low level languages and then have that code executed in the browser. This of course opens the door to a whole new set of exploit scenarios because now that code is actually running in the browser, not on the server as it's sort of traditionally used to run when you're talking about code written in C. The other risk of this, of course, is that a lot of developers that are used to high level languages may be tempted to actually do create some code in WebAssembly now in order to improve the performance of their existing JavaScript code. So they may now be porting some functions that used to be executed in JavaScript to WebAssembly and recode them in C, not really realizing all these sort of inherent problems that you may run into if you're using one of these low level languages. So if you find yourself in a boat where you are starting to look into WebAssembly and using some of these low level languages, uh, please take a look at this white paper first to learn about possible vulnerabilities that you should be aware of. And maybe it's an effect of the declining value of some cryptocurrencies and there's a little bit sort of panic setting in in some of the people dealing with them. But it looks like we have seen a substantial increase in scans for port 8545 over the last week and a number of other people that are observing this have seen the same thing. This port is typically used by Ethereum wallets in order to expose a simple unauthenticated JSON RPC API. We have written about it before, but if not protected well, it can be trivially used in order to steal someone's cryptocurrency. Given the intensity at which we have seen these scans in the past, I think it's unlikely that there are still any exposed and unexploited wallets left. But uh, if you are dealing with Ethereum, please, please make sure that you're not losing your last few coins that you have left to this fairly simple and trivial exploit. Probably still one of the simplest way to monetize malware is click fraud, where essentially your infected system is just clicking on ads in order to provide revenue for whoever is providing the ad inventory. Well, it turns out that mobile devices are actually pretty good for this because their IP address typically keeps changing and they're not so easy to distinguish then from real mobile devices versus click fraud applications that are being used to trigger uh, these hits. 
But most of these malicious applications that are creating these fake clicks are on Android. And turns out iOS actually gives you better revenue. So what happens is that just by changing the user agent string, some of these applications try to impersonate iOS. Not sure how effective this is because there's some other subtle differences in iOS requests that are not necessarily emulated here, but uh, probably it's good enough in order for uh, these fraudulent applications to up their revenue somewhat. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.